Hey, Tim, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? Great, thanks. I'm fine. Uh, a bit uh, early. I, I don't know what, what what is today. I was like cleaning everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a normal day <laughs> because it doesn't happen that, that often that I'm like uh, running around the house, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, let's talk about your band, Methane. Am I... Is it a wrong as I pronounce it? Because I yeah, that's right, methane. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I just make sure. <laughs> um. So you with the band, uh, you start in two thousand twelve. Am I right? right? Yeah. So right. It's Eleven years. Um. Yeah, 10, 11 years now. Yeah, it's yeah. been a long time. <laughs> yeah. D did you add any party for the ten anniversary? No, we didn't do that. Okay. It was like COVID and, and oh, everything yeah, right. like that. So it was like, I don't know. It just kind of blew blew by us. Yeah. But you released yeah. a new album last Gen January, Kill It With Fire. Right. What can you tell about uh, its genesis uh, and lyrics? Um, The the genesis of the album, I, I don't know. It's kind of a, a progression for both uh, myself and uh, my guitar player, Jimmy, were really like old school thrash metal guys and loved thrash metal. Um, we played death metal for years and years and years. And that's kind of why we started Methane to do something different, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's a big, big departure from our first album was more of a groove Pantera thing that we were doing and then we really started playing more and more thrash and coming up with more and more thrash riffs and that's kind of the the idea back um behind the new behind the new album yeah 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 um lyrically i don't know lyrically it's kind of all over the place some of it's like you know real life some of it's political some of it's just comedy you know it's yeah. thrash metal that too you know <laughs> <laughs> a bit of everything <laughs> sure sure yeah, and uh, you were on tour during the summer around Europe. How was yeah, the tour? Yeah. Uh, and uh, what is the the most insane moment uh, of this last tour? Oh, the insane moments! I don't know. We've had a lot of them, but uh, yeah, it was a great tour. We got to we got to go out with Cam Lee and uh, and Massacre, um, old school death metal and thrash metal. It kind of goes hand in hand. It was a lot of fun um toured like you said all all around in europe and then we came back and did our own tour over in in finland we were over there yeah um so it's been a lot of fun i don't know i mean it, the most insane moments um you know the whole thing is really an insane thing to do we packed my my car up with our equipment and drove around europe four guys in a little car with a lot of lot of equipment yeah. You know, we had left the clubs at two o'clock in the morning and had to go up at four o'clock to get to the next show and, and start working again. So I don't know. I mean, I don't have anything that really jumps out. And we had just a lot of fun with everybody with Necrosy and with the Blood Ride and, of course, with the Massacre guys. And it was just a lot of fun. Yeah. Kind of why we do it, you know, met, met a lot of really cool people. That, that's like okay. the best part of it. Yeah. And, uh, uh, do you have any other band at the moment, active band? Are you playing? In no, any? no, I don't play anything act anything else. No, yeah. I don't have time for that. Yeah, and uh, from internet, I have uh, read that uh, I don't know if you are still working as a promoter and also a DJ, or if it was. Um, no, I did past. that for a long time here, like uh, in between bands and stuff like that. Uh, the part of Sweden that I live in, there's really, there's really no, there was really no like hard rock scene here, but there was a lot of metalheads. So uh, me and a couple of people, we got together and we put together our own little uh, club once a month, booked in bands like uh, my buddy's Napalm Death came and played and, you know, that kind of stuff. And yeah, we, yeah. Had, we had fun doing that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Where, where are you living now? In which part of Sweden? Which city? 
Yeah, no city. Okay. <laughs> I live I live like two and a half hours north of Stockholm up in the woods. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's well, I also don't live in a city. I live close of a city. If we, well, uh Andy McCoy told that uh this is not a city when I was referring to the 10 kilometers away closer city from where I live. And it was like, it's not a city. This is a a town, a countryside. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was interesting because yeah. I was referring like city, but it's not a city for him. <laughs> so it, it, right. depends, it depends on... Uh, well, yeah, I'm originally from New York City area, you know, so that's a city. Yeah, so it's a bit <laughs> a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest the biggest town near us is called Borlanga and there's maybe 30,000 people that live there maybe at okay. the most. Yeah. But why did you move to Sweden? Yeah, um I was tricked. <laughs> oh, so. <laughs> a, a long time ago I met a I met a girl when I was living in Florida. She was a Swedish girl, so we got married and had kids and I got tricked to move here. Okay. And how, how do, do you like to live in, fin in in Finland? Yeah, in Sweden. Yeah, Finland's really nice. I haven't lived there, but uh, Sweden, yeah, I love. Yeah, I like it here. I really do. That's why I stayed here. You know, um, it's uh, real safe and it's a lot more safe than living in the U.S. Anyway, you know, you have job security. You have uh, all the the. Uh, what do you call it? Like the, the, the hospitals, everything is really cheap. You know, you can afford everything. So yeah. Yeah. It's quite different. Yeah. Yeah. And how, how do you think that, uh, the metal, uh, the metal scene is different in Sweden from, uh, us. Yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of similarities. I mean, Sweden's really small, you know, Sweden is, what 10 million people in the whole country the size of probably the size of california so there's not a lot of people that live here if you want to compare um it's not a lot of clubs either they only book bands on the weekends here where in the u.s you probably could play more you know during the week as well um so I don't know. I mean, it, it, otherwise, it pretty much works the same way. You know, there's a lot of promoters yeah. that don't want to pay a bands and uh, a lot of bands that want to play. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and a lot of metalheads that just go out to like, don't go out to enough shows to support the gigs. So I don't know. It's pretty much the same everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And um, talking about uh, uh, the metal scene, how do you think that the metal scene has changed during those years because i think that after the social media uh, and the spotify and those things a lot of things start changing and how do you feel since oh, yeah. you've been playing for for a long time well we were talking about that ourselves just this morning we had a band meeting and we were talking about how we're going to get our our spotify plays up and you know, oh, for a uh, hundred years ago, like you, the only bands that people could hear were the bands that got signed by a record company, and put out a record. And those were, the, then you went to the record store and you looked and you said, oh, that was a cool album cover. And you took that home and listened to it. And that became your favorite band. <laughs> now there's just so many bands, like everybody, you and I, we can make a band today and we can put out a song tomorrow on Spotify, you know? Um, there's so much, there's all way too much stuff to listen to now that nobody even clicks that they'll like your, like your post. Hey, we have a new album, but hardly anybody will click on it and actually listen to it. You know, you have to really have a good reason to, to listen to it. Yeah. So in that, in that way that there's so much and there's a lot of good stuff. I mean, every, a lot, a lot of good stuff to listen to that bands get lost in the crowd you know yeah 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 it's really hard to follow every single band i i would like to be able to follow all the bands 
but it's at some point I'm like, oh, this band released last year a new album. I didn't know. Right, right. You get so lost much, in the algorithm. So much information yeah. all the time, and sometimes you get lost, and it's yeah. it's it's crazy. Yeah, you know, you know, I have like three thousand people, three thousand Facebook friends. You know, a lot of people I never even talked to ever. Um, released an album in January, and now I'm going through my Facebook friends list and sending everybody a little message. Can you please check out my album? You know, yeah. and I, I, I'll tell you, like maybe 50 of them have heard it already. Of uh, 3,000 people, they haven't even seen the posts on my on my Facebook page. It's crazy. Yeah, uh, Facebook is really a Facebook, Instagram, all those things. Uh, they show just what i don't know what algor i don't know how the algorithms works but i know that there are people that just pay to mm. to just show things that are not worth it in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> right, right right there are a lot a lot of uh, i don't know i would i would like to to have mm. more post about the metal music but then i get uh, everything else and i'm like oh and just yeah. all to see if something interesting is coming but there is, right. there is what so did what did my neighbor eat for dinner last night yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a lot of shit on facebook for real. It's, it's it's really hard to get just the, the things that you are in, interested and also yeah, you have <laughs> all, all those uh, friends there but there are people they are a number <laughs> there yeah. are just just uh, few that are uh, interested in what you do oh yeah and they even have this there's this facebook friends that you see in town and they won't talk to you they look the other way you know and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that, we're, that's we're good crazy. friends on facebook that's yeah. crazy yeah yeah but uh Let's talk uh, about how you got into metal music. When did you start listening? Um, when I was nine years old, I went to a store and I saw an album with four monsters on it. And I said, I need to have that. It was a Kiss Dynasty album with the picture of all four of them on the, on the cover. And I was just like, wow, that is so, so cool. So that was how I started listening to hard rock. And then it kind of progressed from there. I grew up and I lived a long time in Northern California. And it was like right when the thrash scene was starting. And and first was Motley Crue was really big. And then it was like went over to, to thrash. And, and, you know, you listen to Motley Crue, you're a poser. And Metallica was brand new, you know. So I kind of grew up with all that. And that was the scene in Northern California was thrash yeah. metal. Yeah. Yeah, and it's been in my blood since then. You know, I bought a guitar and I went. Well, I bought a bass. <laughs> I don't really call it a guitar, a bass guitar. When did you start to play? No, no, when I was thirteen years old. Okay, and did you start with a guitar or a bass? With bass. Yeah, and yeah. what was the bass that you that you both as first bass? If you remember, um, it's the same bass that I use today. That's crazy. And that, it's an Ibanez X series destroyer and I still yeah. use it today. Yeah. That's cool. I have a lot of, I have like five, six bases and I just use that one. Yeah. The first love is the first love. <laughs> yeah. It's the best one. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, you <laughs> of course you find that you can try a lot of basses uh, and they are different and you have to feel comfortable how the, you feel uh your your finger and how how you feel the the bass on you and the sound uh so it's it's personal sure, I've played I think. It. I've, yeah, it is very personal but I've, I've played a lot of different basses live and i've toured with different basses and i always come back to this one you know? yeah 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 and when did you start to sing um 10 years ago 12 11 years ago okay I started to sing with, with methane, so that was like, oh, yeah. I'm still learning. 
Well, learning is a never-ending process in everything you do. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's that's true. And I don't even know if I call it singing. I kind of yell at people. <laughs> that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's the best metal album, in your opinion, if there is one that you think that is the best? No, I can't say that. I don't know. It really depends on your mood, you know? Yeah. I love I love so much music, you know, from from the, you know, Black Sabbath stuff in the beginning to, you know, to new stuff. I mean, in every genre in between, it's just impossible to say the best metal album ever. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's 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 impossible. Yeah. Yeah, I I have asked this question to I don't know if to everyone that has been my guest or almost mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's always like a tricky question that people are not able to to answer because there are so many great albums out there that it's oh yeah i mean and it depends like right right now today this is my favorite and then an hour from now this is my favorite <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know so. yeah and do you have a favorite band no, no, I like a lot of bands. I mean, you know, of course, a lot of thrash metal, especially, yeah. you know. Um, there, is a, there is any music genre that you don't like? Music, metal genre, you mean? Um, music genre, yeah, of course. I don't listen to pop and rap. I have kind of, it's very little of that kind of stuff that I listen to. Yeah. You know, yeah, you. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, metal genres, I and mean, I like the good stuff, yeah. So, if it's a good black metal band or a good death metal band or a good, you know, heavy metal band, I like it, you know, yeah, it's yeah, gotta, it's gotta talk to me, true, true. You have to vibe with the, with the music of the band, exactly, exactly, yeah. and um. Uh, what was the first live gig that you have been as a in the, in the in the audience? The first live gig that I saw, I think, was the Mr. Bungle show. Um, I think I must, might have seen the Mike Patton's old band, Mr. Bungle, up in Eureka where I lived, or or it was uh, Dio and Dawkins. That was like the first really big show I saw. It was yeah, Dio. Yeah. Dio played with Dawkins. Yeah, I think yeah. that was the first one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool. Gr growing up in Northern California, we got to see a lot of cool thrash shows in San Francisco. Like I saw Slayer and Overkill and Slayer at a little club. And I've seen Metallica at a little club. And oh, I've seen a lot of really cool. Yeah. Cool shows back then. But, I, can, uh, I can I can image. Uh, you know, I, I I was born in Italy, and uh, in Italy there is not that much for metal music. Mm. So every time I had to go to Milan or to Slovenia to see some some metal bands, so I I always think that in a bigger places uh, then you get more chance to see great bands. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. And it's uh, also now where I live. I live in Finland, and Finland is the the country with the most metal band <laughs> per per right. uh, uh, habitant. But still, uh, I live in a place where there is no much live music, or at least. Right. Uh, you know, uh, I think that uh, 2018, a lot of clubs just stopped, and mm. uh, yeah, and uh, everything went went downhill <laughs> for me. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's kind of the same here where I live. We have a lot of lot of musicians, a lot of great bands, but no place to play. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a problem. Sure. Yeah. Always I say, if I will have money, I will just start to to create a place 
a place to make big concert and to give more something more but yeah i don't have money so <laughs> right yeah well, and all the, all the like you said all the big bands they go to the big cities where people come you know and they have they can get a big bigger crowd that pays their pays their bills yeah yeah i mean a huge band came to my hometown they would be like you know a thousand people that went there and you know it wouldn't do so good <laughs> yeah yeah it's something to think also <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, what was the best show that you ever saw Oof. wow I've seen a lot of shows I think uh, some of the coolest shows I've been to, I've seen. Uh, there was a like a, a mini festival in California called Day on the Green, and that was um, Scorpions. I think headlined Scorpions, Rat, and then this new crazy band Metallica played, and uh, Y and T. I mean, it was like a that was like right when Ride the Lightning came out. That was like a really cool show. Um, then when I lived in New Jersey, there was a show with Iron Maiden and there was a huge riot in the parking lot and people were turning over cars and, and lighting them on fire and throwing rocks at the police and stuff like that. So that was kind of cool. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Something different. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I've been to a lot of shows, a lot of club shows, a lot of a lot of arena shows. I love to go watch bands. You know? So when something extra special like that happens, it's definitely like... Uh, something that, that, that stay, stay that stay in your mind yeah yeah um, yeah yeah and uh how do you get ready before a show hmm. um a long time ago i used to get real drunk okay <laughs> <laughs> used to get uh, used to drink and then like you know to kill the nerves and, and go on stage but now nowadays i i don't know we just kind of hang out warm up uh and then go out and play it's kind of you know we've done it i've done it so much now it, it it's not like uh it's not scary anymore you know yeah. it's more fun just to run out on stage and yell at people and so i don't really need to do so much to get ready i play yeah. bass <laughs> I warm up my voice a little bit. I warm up my fingers a little bit, and then uh, and yeah, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. yeah. And what is the first thing that you do when you get off the off the stage? Um, I usually, well, my my job is usually I, I I run to the merchandise booth and sit there and dry myself off and try to you know meet meet everybody that came out to see us and and. Yeah. And hang out. Yeah, that's nice. I think that or people that's that what... didn't come, or new, new people that didn't come to see us and like the band and wanted to come and talk, you know. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. It's. I think it's always cool when, you know, people in the audience can go and talk with the artist, and uh, and it's even cooler when uh, the artist is someone that you didn't know before, and uh, mm -hmm. you you just get into the music so much that you have to go and say congratulations the show was crazy and then buy everything that, that the band is selling <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i think that's that's the, like the best part for me too when we play live is to meet people that came to the show and we, you know i meet so many good friends that way it's it's a lot of fun yeah, you know, yeah. for real it's really important to support the bands and uh by the merchandising the the album and so on because nowadays mm. i think that most of the money comes from from those yeah absolutely absolutely i mean the music is more of a an advertisement for the for the t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, well it is kind of but uh yeah i, I do the same thing i i collect t-shirts so i love love i got a lot of band shirts yeah 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 how many t-shirts, band t-shirts? Do, do I don't you know. know. I haven't I haven't counted them, but I I have a, a unique way to fold them, so I can see when I open my my drawers, I can see the logo. So I, oh, I want to wear that logo today. Are you yeah. putting like uh, uh, like in a 
let me take one one third uh like this so now i have this shirt yeah like exactly. this and then, and then you put like in this way exactly yeah yes. i'm doing the same thing <laughs> <laughs> because I yeah. like to know what I'm what I'm picking. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's the best way <laughs> to put the t-shirt so you know what where where the t-shirt is. <laughs> yeah, and it looks really cool when you open the drawers too. It's like, oh yeah, yeah look at all the shirts. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so so <laughs> nice. Uh, I think that I start to do this in this way once that I saw a video that someone was floating the, the the shirt and the putting this way and then I was oh that's that's clever that's the better yeah. than what I'm doing and so then I start and yeah it saves a lot of space also in my opinion. Yeah that too. It's yeah cool. Yeah <laughs> <laughs> those those important things <laughs> maybe someone starts is. to do the same thing after this interview. Yeah, yeah. right <laughs> it starts the, the shirt folding club. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's uh, go to random topics. Uh, let's see. Let's see. This is the famous or infamous chart, and okay. let's hope to get something interesting. Not always the same thing. I think this one: tattoos and piercing. Um, so do you mm. have do you have any tattoo? I do. I have two tattoos. Okay. I would like to have a lot more tattoos, but they cost a lot of money, and then I kind of get like uh, I don't know. I got to have that on my body the rest of my life. So I kind of think I think about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> and where the, the those tattoo are are on the arms? I have one on on the back of my neck. I have a Chinese symbol from. The late '90s it was a weird period in my life, and then I have uh, my uh, my Scottish fami family crest on my on my leg. Okay, nice. So if my leg ever gets cut off and lost somewhere, everybody knows whose leg it is. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was thinking that I also have two tattoos. They are both on my back. And I would like to have much more, but yeah, as you, I they cost a lot of money, and uh, then I always thinking, uh, what should I? I know more or less what I want, but then uh, yeah, then times go by and uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it sounds exactly waiting. like me. Yeah, I have a whole arm. A whole sleeve designed in my head like what i want but I have, yeah okay yeah it saves yeah. time yeah <laughs> uh, do you have any piercing um i've had i think it was 13 piercings at one time um eight in my eye two in my nose that's 10 11 my lip tongue 12 and one somewhere down there. Okay. Yeah. And then you take um, everything off uh, at some point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I tried to grow up. I cut my hair and I got a job and I took out my piercings and that kind of stuff. You know, people but do weird stuff sometimes. On the eyebrow. Yeah. It looked like a spring that went through. It was kind of okay. cool. They were like small to big. Yeah. Yeah. I think that I have never seen anyone. Uh, with that much uh, thing going on on the eyebrow. I have seen more on the lips area or of course on the ears, mm. but- I never had my ears pierced. Yeah, but yeah. And when did you take off everything? Uh, what what year, year was? Oh, geez, I don't know. It was probably 2000 or something like that, 99. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you moved to Sweden in '99. Yeah, 90, no, 2000. I moved here. Yeah, thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was close to moving. Right. Cut my hair. Got a job. Took out my piercings. Had kids. You know, did that for a while. Yeah. 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 
a diff different thing from uh, what it was before. <laughs> totally, totally different. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, about uh, uh, tattoos, um, do you think that uh, the tattoos need to always have uh, a meaning or uh, do you think that it's more a piece of art? Um, for myself, I think both. I think it's a piece of art that that should be personal. I mean, it is on my body for the rest of my life, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, you know, it it was at some point uh, there was this discussion uh, about uh, if tattoos should be always with a meaning, or if it should be like just whatever the drawing i i like that drawing so i want that mm. uh, so th there was this discussion i i also think that the tattoos that i have uh, um i i don't think they are uh, pre pre pretty but they have me a meaning for me and mm -hmm. if someone asks i can explain everything that's going on there but uh, otherwise i'm if someone wants to draw whatever 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 they want without meaning it's for me it's the same and uh, i really like to to watch people that have tattoos and uh, looking to those beautiful piece of heart it's it's really interesting sure. and i think that sometimes there are for example those girls that have those tattoos on on the legs on the tights and uh, i think it's 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 beautiful but i will never take the tattoo on my tights for example but I, mm. I love to watch those those girls yeah. that have the tattoos they, they fit well uh, or also tattoos that go up to the to the neck uh, those guys with, mm. I think it's 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 really really beautiful but again I would not take it for myself right oh, those the ones on the neck especially I always think like what happens when you get old and you get like the double chin and the neck hanging down and stuff like that. Yeah, I w yeah. sometimes <laughs> I think uh, you know uh, if we talk about uh, if someone has a lot of tattoos, uh, what happen during uh, an emergency or during surgery right. is something that uh, I can see where the, the something is. <laughs> I, I don't know. For the, I, I'm not a doctor. I'm I'm a physiotherapist, but I. Yeah. It doesn't affect my job, but thinking about doctor or nurses, uh, mm -hmm. it will be interesting to hear their point of view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. May I ask a question about the piercing? Mm -hmm. Because you, you told that uh, you had also down there a piercing. Yeah. yeah. How painful was it when you got it? Nah, it wasn't so painful. I mean, those are sharp needles. Okay. Okay. Was that uh, maybe was, afterwards? Was, was the <laughs> uh, the King Albert or what, what's the name? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the yeah. name. <laughs> <laughs> I I always think that in certain parts of the body it may maybe be painful. Well, yeah. At least I have heard the. Uh, uh, from a friend that uh, she had the both of uh, her nipples and she told that it was really painful and mm. also she got one down there and uh, she said yeah the moment was quite intense <laughs> mm. but I don't know maybe <laughs> for a male is different <laughs> no I mean I think it's adrenaline and you know it goes quick yeah, yeah. It was a long time ago, so I don't. Yeah, but let's pick another, another thing. Let's let's see what we are going to talk now. Okay. There is one here. Oh, that was a good one. So it's a books. Do you like books. to read? Them? No. <laughs> It was not not a good one. <laughs> <laughs> All the best books I know are on CD. 
Well, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so let's pick uh, another one because if you are not into <laughs> it, it's we have not not that much to talk about. No. <laughs> let's get this. Oh, this one is like last time. Paranormal. Do you mm -hmm. believe in paranormal activity? Sure. sure. Do you have any experiences? Yeah, sure. Lots of them. Would you like to tell something? Um, I don't know. Ever since I was a little kid, my mother's always been like this weird, like witch kind of lady. And, uh, you know, a lot of astrology and hippie witch kind of witchcraft and stuff like that. So I kind of grew up with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, uh, a lot of unexplained things have happened, you know. I mean, even like people that have died, and I've gotten messages from from people that haven't. My my grandmother died, and then I had a friend that's never met my grandmother's in the United States, a friend here in Sweden that started saying something to me that only my grandmother would say. Like it was like weird things like that, you know, like messages that I've gotten. And yeah, I believe in it. Yeah, yeah, I I do also believe. Uh, I I think that my mother has always been also that you know this kind of person that uh, uh, introduced me to paranormal, and uh, she. Uh, she, she used to have a boyfriend that uh, died and the brother of her boyfriend also died young uh, and uh, she, she always told me that she was they, they were doing this thing of recording just put her to record uh, when they were doing like cleaning or other things and then listening and sometimes there was there were the, a voice saying things, so yeah. it's, um, like things that her boyfriend or the brother were normally saying. Right, so right, I understand. It's, uh, it's it's interesting. It's something that you cannot explain, and uh, I um, I remember uh, sometimes there are some something like. Uh, you were talking about uh, your grandmother that passed away and uh, people that passed away and uh, you maybe you are thinking you are struggling uh, thinking uh, about uh, how the things are going to be without this person and then you get uh, some message like I remember I I was in the sauna and uh, uh, there was a uh, we had this uh, bridge uh, uh, thing uh, there, and uh, the the leaves uh, they, the the leaves start to move, and then I was like, "No, oh, yeah. the birch the birch thing that you <laughs> guys that, hit, the, yeah, the one that, that hit, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, and then it stopped to move, but it moved for yeah. a moment when I was thinking, and then I was, is that kind of a message, right? <laughs> so that everything is okay." <laughs> <laughs> yeah th there are those things that you cannot explain it's it's exactly it's, it's really interesting yeah even and, if it's not true it's it's fun to think that it is true so i want i i choose to believe it yeah 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 and uh, you know yeah i believe in a uh, evidence base when it's about uh you know science but still uh, there is this i grow up with those story those things and uh, you yeah you cannot explain so there is no no explanation and when there is no explanation what you do <laughs> right exactly yeah <laughs> and uh, do you believe also in the horoscope yeah sure yeah what what's Not the your... one in the newspaper though yeah <laughs> what's your horoscope I'm I'm a Gemini with a Libra rising sign. Okay, I'm mm. a Pisces with a Lion rising. So oh, Lion. Okay. Huh? So <laughs> mm? it makes sense about why I'm like I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I I I I know that. Uh, yeah, when you when you find the uh, the horoscope for the week, 
it yeah. it never works like this. So no, I always no. laugh, but there are things about the horoscope interesting how how your own love if you have your uh astral chart, for example. Mm -hmm. So you you more or less know what what can you do in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, then uh, the fate is in your hands. So, <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, I have a chart somewhere here. I don't know. My yeah. mother did that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I got my chart. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I think maybe twenty years ago. So I don't remember mm -hmm. what everything was, but more or less, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more or less. Uh, yeah, I, cool, don't, don't, cool. I don't remember what they were saying, but um, I think it was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go to the most important topic of this interview. Yes. Okay. Pizza. Do you like pizza? pizza? I like pizza. Yeah. You have I to it. <laughs> I, I, I have eaten a lot of pizza. I like pizza. Yeah. Um, my favorite is, of course, New York pizza. Okay. I have heard that the New York pizza is uh, uh, different from ev everywhere else. Yes. It's interesting. Yeah. It's not yeah. like Italian pizza, but it's good, I have heard. No. So. But it's made by uh, Italian-Americans. Yeah. So, so it's, it's got like something, that. some some Italian... What do you say? Influence, anyway. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, I love American Italian food. Actually, it's awesome. Okay. That's like my favorite food: pizza and and chicken parmesan or, and Italian sausage. And oh my god, when what's I go it, back to the U.S. What's Italian sausage? Because I I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> I'm Italian, but uh, yeah. I don't know what, what you, in, a, in the recipe. United States is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you call it here? Cilicia or Cilicia? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I've seen it ki kind of the same, the kind of the same sausage here in Sweden, anyway. But uh, it's something like a pinkish color that you. Eat, uh, in the, in the no, bar. not like salami or, or pepperoni, but uh, it's a, something totally different. Okay. But that's what it, that would be my favorite pizza would be. It's Italian sausage and pepperoni. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Enjoy. I'll send you a recipe. Maybe you maybe you'll maybe you'll recognize what it is. Yeah, I may check it later. So because yeah. I'm curious now to know what what it is, <laughs> because there is a lot, of, you know. Uh, when it comes to Italian American food, uh, is a uh, a different word from Italian food. <laughs> I know, and it's the best too. You got to go to the U.S. and eat Italian food. I I will, I will you. try I'm as soon you. as I'm able to go, <laughs> <laughs> and then say say if is it good or not. <laughs> oh, you have good food in Italy too. I like I've eaten a lot in Italy. I like food there too. Yeah. So. I like food. <laughs> I have Food's no good. problem. Yeah. Whenever, of course, there are countries that maybe offer a bit more than others, but generally, I like also Finnish food that for many Italians is like, oh my God, what you are saying. I like, I like it. <laughs> what, do you, what do you eat in Finland that's like, like what you would call Finnish food? So, for example, I really love the Christmas Finnish food. Okay. Uh, for Christmas, normally there is a every every everybody buy the ham, so right. they they cook for uh, I don't know many hours, but a lot of hours, and then they cut and uh, you have served with uh, um, the most mustard, and the one mm -hmm. I, I a lot of people like more the sweeter mustard, but I prefer mm -hmm. the um the more the stronger taste not mm -hmm. sweet but strong like a bit of a dijon for example mm -hmm. if, if we think about that and uh, then uh, then i like um this caria uh, lampaisti and it's uh, um stew with uh, um uh, pork and um 
and oh damn <laughs> what's the name uh pork and what's the other one the other meat well it's a stew of meat uh okay. and, uh, a carrots and uh, i don't know i don't know whatever else there is in and uh then you eat with uh, potatoes. Uh, mm -hmm. Then there is all those uh, casserole. Uh, there is this uh, macaroni latico that is not just for Christmas. Macaroni latico is uh, all, the, all the year. And okay. it's uh, macarons uh, baked. I think that it's uh, more inspired from Italian-American cuisine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and there is they put milk eggs uh, then there is um, miss meat uh, and and some cheese going on there and then uh, everything okay is... uh, we have something like that in sweden too yeah yeah, yeah. i think <laughs> that there are a lot of similar things in sweden yeah and then the, there are the those other casserole there is the Pork analatico and it's a carrot. I don't know how it, they do, but because I buy ready, just right. warm up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then there is a lantulatico that I don't know what's the the name of that 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 uh, that thing. In uh, I think it's uh, something that just in uh, the nor north of country they used. Um, but it's really good. I don't know how to explain. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and and then there is this um, perunalatico, and there is a uh, potatoes. Uh, it it's everything a bit like uh, mashed. So it's uh, if you don't have uh, this, then you can eat. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. I, I I don't know. I like <laughs> the things. Uh, I may be a weird person. I don't know. <laughs> Grand grandma can come and eat also. That's good. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a grandma can eat. All right. But yeah, pretty pretty much those are the the things that, uh, and I really like the Karyalan pasty, not just for Christmas. That is the the, the stew with um, meat and. Uh, mm. No, that one we don't. That one I'm not, I'm not familiar with here. Yeah, it's. it's we usually have we usually have meatballs, and then we have like little tiny little tiny sausages and then we have uh uh sill that's the uh pickled herring yeah yeah that's the real sweeter stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> the well everybody knows uh sweden uh for ikea 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 what's, yeah. what's the right uh, way to pronounce i will say ikea yeah. but uh how the sweden pronunciation uh, is uh, do you know? I don't know. I always say it wrong. I say Ikea, so it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but everybody knows Ikea. that. But every, yeah. every, everybody goes to eat the meatballs there. <laughs> it's something exactly. that what is Sweden meatballs. <laughs> Swedish meatballs. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's different from Italian's meatballs, for example. Yeah. Quite different, I must say. <laughs> mm. I always make my Italian meatballs, actually, yeah, with the tomato you, sauce. Yeah, oh, really good. And do you eat mm. it just like this, or do you put also pasta? Uh, or do you I put in not, the bread? I actually, I, I actually try not to eat so much bread and pasta anymore, but uh, it's good that way, for sure. Yeah, that's Spaghetti true. and meatballs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a nice big meatball sandwich. That's good, too. Yeah, it's the best. Warm meatballs. Mm. Sauce. It's a mozzarella melted on top. Yeah, yeah. Gladly, mm. I have eaten because otherwise I would be like, oh, <laughs> dying <laughs> to have some food. But yeah, yeah, I eat before, so I'm fine. <laughs> but uh, uh, where uh, did you eat the best pizza in New York? Or... Oh, I guess Ray's famous pizza is my is my spot. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, they're yeah. kind of a chain now, but before they just they were just down on the Lower East Side in New York City. Now they're all over the place. But okay. Ray's famous. Okay, mm. so good to know because if I never go, if I ever go there, then I know where I have to taste the yeah. pizza. 
<laughs> and uh, <laughs> where did you eat the worst pizza ever? Oh, God, I'm sure I've eaten some really bad pizzas, but I, probably like 7-Eleven, like eating a frozen 7-Eleven pizza when I was drunk or something. That's probably the worst one ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when you are drunk, everything tastes good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think we used to get these like these pizza rolls. It was kind of like an egg roll, but it was pizza in it. You know, and eat those when we were drunk. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you just eat whatever it comes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the question, because the world is dividing it in two. The, the one that thinks that pineapple belongs on pizza and the pineapple doesn't uh -huh. belong. What's your opinion on this topic? Um, I can eat pineapple on pizza. Sure. I can eat whatever on a pizza. In, in the U.S., they put everything on a pizza. I mean, you can have whatever you want, you know? Yeah. Pizza is like a sandwich. Just like a big sandwich in the oven, so. Okay. Whatever you want. I think, so I think you, it's You, you it's are art. a team ananas or pineapple, sorry. Pineapple on right. pizza. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's uh, uh, interesting every time that I do the interviews, uh, asking, uh, so hearing uh, what people think uh, because this uh, metal pizza start as a uh, a bit as a joke talking about right. before i went to do an interview for a website we were eating a pizza and then uh, my friend was like uh, asked the band if uh, pineapple belongs to pizza and then i was uh -huh. like, i'm uh -huh. not going to ask this it doesn't make sense that i'm doing an interview about <laughs> music and i ask something like this and then i start this this thing of metal pizza running my yeah. head. Let's let's give a try and uh, well. <laughs> I think pizza pizza is an art, you know. It's a it's also an art, so you can have whatever you want on pizza as long as it's good. Yeah, and everybody is free to eat the pizza that they want because, exactly. I, for example, I don't like uh, the idea of uh, fruit on pizza, but I don't. Uh, uh, I don't even like uh, uh, what in Italy they serve the this uh, honey melon with uh, uh, with ham around uh, dry ham around. For mm. me, it's like uh, a big no because mm. antipasto. Hello. No, it yeah, it's is it like an antipasto? Or it's a second serve. I'm I'm not okay. sure <laughs> because I don't. I don't like the, that. And the first time that I, I was served it, I was like, why? I took the <laughs> honey mail away and I eat the, the parma ham. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, that, that's the dessert and this is uh, antipasto. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> I was there like confused, but it was in Italy. <laughs> and again, yeah, I I don't know what's uh, what's about that, but I don't feel to mix a certain taste and uh, i i have sometimes tried something and i i don't like the mixing of those tastes i, I don't know why because there are mm. a lot of, for example in the you know asian cuisine they mix a lot of things with uh sure. in apple or other things i have tasted something no it's not not for me <laughs> Not my thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I thought it was kind of interesting. I, I saw the name of the of, of your pod as Metal Pizza. And then I thought, you know, there's a, a thrash genre called Pizza Thrash. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. And it's actually it's actually supposed to be like like a put down for bands that, that sing just about like posers and beer and and like, you know, the, the typical thrash metal things that you're supposed yeah. to sing about. It's supposed to be like Oh, those bands suck. So it's kind of cool like to play pizza thrash, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to let go <laughs> everything. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> we without uh, you know, being uh, too um mind narrow. Yeah. 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 I think that uh, it's it's interesting uh, also. I d I don't know about um this uh, podcast the talk show how you want to call it's right. uh, it's still new i don't know it's 
if people are really into but if someone can write in the comment uh, if it's a good thing or what i don't know what people think yet because mm. i have started this was during the summer so it's pretty new so yeah i'm seeing what how it works and uh, and uh, it's still like everything is open let's see i i try to upgrade myself i uh, I have on there a new microphone, uh, so I try. I don't have a microphone here, so it's from the camera. So mm. I try to get a better quality with time, but it takes time. And uh, le let's see. But I think it's uh, it's nice to have a chat with uh, artists and all the people that uh, that are involved in the metal community, and, yeah. uh, and just listen to the story and. Uh, seeing different point of views and talk about pizza and, uh, and pineapple yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah I, I think that, that that it's always uh it's always fun for for every, everybody absolutely absolutely it's a lot of fun i love i'll, I'll say like to to meet new people and and, yeah. and talk music and stuff so this is great yeah and to promote also the bands, for example, mm -hmm. or if there is some photographer, because if we don't help each other, how how it's going to be? It's, exactly. It's something that everybody right. should do in the community, I think. It's a metal family. Yeah, true. <laughs> so a metal family that, that should have a metal pizza together. Absolutely. <laughs> It's a bit hard to, to get all the metalettes in the world and have a pizza, but yeah, it's a beautiful idea, image. <laughs> but would you like to say something to your fans? Um, I don't think we have fans. I have a lot of friends and people that like our music. That's kind of how I look at it. And uh, just tell everybody to, yeah, keep doing what you're doing, supporting music, support metal pizza. Thank you. Go in and, and, and stream some methane for us. <laughs> uh, yeah. And eat pineapple on your pizza. <laughs> Important thing. I'm going to take <laughs> this part and put it uh, in the Instagram uh, just to remind people. <laughs> but thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you here as a uh, as guest. Yeah, Christina, and, uh, really nice to meet you and awesome yeah. to talk to you. And let's do it again. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>